Hey everybody, my name is Gray Alistair, and this video is a recap of the Sevtech story so far. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the nostalgia as we rewind the clock and dive back into our origins of Sevtech ages. Age Zero We began our journey in Age Zero as a humble caveman. We worked hard and scraped together some resources along the way to craft up a basic workbench, the primitive form of a crafting table. This type of crafting used a rock to craft basic items one at a time, and for a while that was good enough for us. We started our base on the side of a hill and became a true caveman. Next, we created a campfire and finally began to cook up our food and provided ourselves with nutrition. Due to the nutrition system in the game, we began to develop a stronger body and received extra hearts for our struggles. We realized that we could advance our technologies through completing achievements. With this knowledge, we set out on a quest to hone our dual caveman mind to reach greater technologies. Soon enough, we acclimated ourselves to the ancient world and drew upon the power of spirits, strengthening ourselves through the totemic rituals. Utilizing the animals in the world and pairing them with the power of our totemic rituals, we were able to tame horses for our basic machines, cows and buffalo for food, and eagles to help us with our Minecraft rendition of Sweet Home Alabama. We continued on to develop basic weapons and armor and prepared ourselves for fights to come. After completing all of the achievements in Age Zero and defeating the boss, Baycock, we advanced to the next age. Age 1. Entering the Bronze Age. Our old body faded away, and we became warriors of blood and sacrifice. We became a Spartan warrior and finally began to upgrade our weapons and armors to new, stronger materials. We built our new home in the fashion of a Greek temple and moved out of our old cave home. We found samples of tin and copper on the surface of the world and dug down to these great deposits of ore underneath the surface. When smelted together, copper and tin created the bronze alloy and we were able to craft bronze armor and tools. Finally equipped with the proper tools, we were able to fight our way through many battles in the Hunter's Dimension, a new dimension that is eternally nighttime and filled with hostile mobs. After slaughtering our way through the undead, we dove headfirst into the magics of blood alchemy and abyssal craft, sacrificing our health to complete our magical objectives, and crafting the Apprentice Blood Orb and Blank Teleporter. We used the Blank Teleporter to take us to another dimension called the Beneath a dimension beneath the surface of a world, home to a monster we cannot see. Without the light of a torch, we would be damaged by the invisible gatekeeper. This dimension was the home of two mysterious ores, Black Quartz and Aquamarine, both of which could only be found in this dimension. From here, we went home and continued completing achievements until we advanced to the next age. During this time, we finally crafted a normal crafting table and we were able to craft like normal Minecrafters. Age 2 to start off the Iron Age, we shed our Spartan armor and donned our Ender Knight Mage set and headed off on an achievement mission to create the portal to the Betweenlands. We had to find a Dark Druid altar and violently slaughter the narcissistic Dark Druids that spawned there. Every time they died, they would drop one of four talisman pieces that would allow us to craft a Druid talisman. Using this talisman, right clicking on a tree sapling would create the portals of between lands, and our living hell would officially begin. In the between lands, normal weapons and tools don't work, so we had to start anew and craft a new crafting table and new tools from the between lands resources. We created bone tools from the bones of mobs and went mining, finding rare resources of the dimension. After mining, we explored our surrounding areas and found two dungeons, the Kragrock Tower and the Sludgeon. After dying multiple times in the tower and accidentally breaking the Sludgeon Castle, we decided the Betweenlands was not the friendliest of places and headed back home. We decided to begin building our new home. The blueprints of a grand castle developed and we laid out the beginnings of our new base. In an effort to develop our technologies, we dove into the Tinker's Construct mod and created a Tinker's Smeltery, allowing us to utilize lava and the myriad of ores that we had found so far. Even though Tinker's Construct is a great mod, the gods of Zeptek did not allow us to create the amazing tools that we had hoped for, holding us back from discovering ores that could be of use to us in the mod. Instead, we began to look into Astral Sorcery and sharpened up some rock crystals to create crystal tools that would never break. After mining up sufficient 
amounts of ore resources, we crafted up some black quartz armor and dove back into the Between Lands in another attempt to conquer its dungeons. We successfully passed through the Sludgeon Dungeon and died many, many times in the Crag Rock Tower, but in the end, we managed to defeat both dungeons and won ourselves the Ring of Ascent, allowing us limited flight capabilities at the expense of our precious experience. Conquering the dungeons gave us the confidence to take on another dimension. We moved on towards the Twilight Forest dimension and set out on a mission to conquer the lands there. We attacked the Naga and won its head as trophy and stormed the Tower of the Twilight Lich, taking out all beings that lived there. We moved on towards the Phantom Knights and took out the denizens of the maze. The Urigast and Hydra presented themselves as difficult bosses, but we took them out with ease and made our way to the Snow Queen, finding her at the top of the Aurora Palace in the Snow Biome. Having successfully beaten the Twilight Force bosses and harvesting the troll caves and giant clouds, we headed home with our backpacks full of amazing loot. Being so close to the end of H2, and nowhere near done exploring the mod packs or building our castle, we decided to put a halt to our achievement hunting tendencies and dove into the Astral Sorcery mod in an effort to gain the creative flight ability. Having had no prior experience with Astral Sorcery, starting the mod proved to be a little more difficult than I was accustomed to. I struggled to comprehend the necessities of the Lunar Arts, but eventually began to find my path through the Moon Madness. To begin, we created a Fuzzic Resonator to find an area rich in Starlight Energies, which happened to be right behind our throne room. We constructed a tower in the area, and placed our first Astral Sorcery Altar at the top. We upgraded our Luminous Crafting Table, and began to advance through the Astral Sorcery Tome. After two full episodes and six hours of struggling with the mod pack, we advanced to a stage where the creative flight ability was in sight. We had attuned ourselves to the VCO constellation, which would allow us to use the VCO perks obtained through the Astral Sorcery Tome. Flight was one of these perks. In the last 45 minutes before we would attain the flight capabilities, we ran out of an important resource to the mod, Stardust. The easiest way to obtain more was from iron ore that we could find in the Twilight Forest. Approaching the portal and stepping through, we were greeted by an exploding creeper on the other side. The creeper blew up our portal and nearly sealed our fate in the Septech Ages mod pack. However, we lucked out and had the capabilities of returning in our backpack. We had iron ore and the collector crystal and a linking wand that we were able to use to recreate the portal and make our way back home. Finally, we were ready to obtain the flight ability. We pulled together our resources and set about creating the Mantle of the Stars, which allowed us to use the perks found in the Astral Sorcery Tome. After crafting the Mantle of the Stars, we set the armor piece to the VCO Constellation. Once crafted and equipped, we finally obtained the long sought after Creative Flight ability. And that is all for the recap. This video serves as a go-to for those wishing to catch up on the series, and hopefully this helps anyone that is new to the channel. If you enjoyed, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you've not done so already, because any support to the channel is support to me, the creator, and all of you as the viewer. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.